So welcome back to my short series on valuing companies. Short and sharp, not a degree course, and the next topic I want to take on fits in to my introductory video, three ways to value a company, and it's method number two. I've already done one video, which is out there, on how to value a company using their assets. So let's go straight in to the second of the three approaches I outline in the introductory video, and that is valuing a company using multiples. Okay, if you've seen the first video, and I urge you to take a look at three ways to value a company, you'll see that I mention net assets-based approach as one, multiple-based approach, that's now today, and then there's full-blown DCF, or discounted cash flow, and I'll deal with that in another video. Okay, so in this short, sharp series of introductory videos, what is the way you go about valuing a company using multiples? It's a bit quick and dirty, this method, certainly not scientifically foolproof, but it's a useful check on whether your other methods, net assets, DCF, are throwing out sensible numbers. So see it that way, back of an envelope check, uh, does this valuation make sense? Who would use the method I'm about to describe? Well, a predator may be looking to value uh, a company, for example. Um, somebody who's looking to maybe list a private company. You know, what's a private company worth? There's no share price. How do I even start? Can use this approach. And an investor just thinking, well, is the company I'm looking at good value relative to other companies? Can also use this approach. It's got a few approaches, but it is a little bit quick and dirty. Now, it rests on a key point, which is if you're going to value anything using a multiple and this fast approach, you need to pick the right multiple. What do I mean by that? Well, um, basically, what I'm suggesting is there is a way of using ratios to get a quick and dirty valuation of a company, but you need to sort of choose the right one for the company or sector, okay? And what I mean by that is if you're choosing a ratio, by the way, do take a look at my other ratios videos if you're unsure about some of this stuff. I'll mention them at the end. All right, if you're valuing a company using a multiple, you've got earnings-based multiples, like classic example, the old-fashioned PE ratio. There's one or two others out there too. Then you've got sales-based multiples, like the price-to-sales ratio, okay? For those people thinking, crikey, this is a bit quick, uh, there are videos out there called what is a PE ratio, what is the price to sales ratio, okay? Uh, and then you've got what I call sort of asset-driven multiples, like the price to book ratio, all right? Now, my point is this. If you're looking at a company and you're thinking, oh, I want to do a dirty, quick and dirty check on its valuation, or I'm looking at a private company, I'm not sure quite what to compare it to, you need to compare it to something which is similar. So you need to decide what sort of beast it is you're trying to do this method on, you know, is it a company that's driven by earnings? There's a clue. Is it even generating any earnings? Because if it isn't, it's not much point in trying to value it using an earnings-based approach. There are companies that are loss-making, grabbing market share, telecoms, dot-coms, for example, that don't have earnings. So you can't use an earnings-based method to value them. You have to use like a sales-based method. Or even sillier, you know, a sort of price-to-click or a price-to-eyeballs method. All right, but we'll leave some of that dot-com silliness behind for today. So, you know, is it a sales-driven company, i.e. it doesn't have any earnings? Is it earnings-driven, which is obviously what, frankly, you, you'd like to see in most cases, or is it asset-driven? Is it the size of the balance sheet that drives the industry and the sector? Right, investment trust companies, property companies, for example, is that the key driver? Because that's going to influence how you go about what I'm about to suggest next. So, lesson number one, pick the right multiple. Easy said than done, right, but important. Now, let's assume you've decided you want to go down an earnings-based route. So how do you do it? How does any of this stuff give you a valuation for a company or a quick and dirty check as to whether a company is cheap or expensive? Well, the answer to that question is you can simply rearrange a PE ratio or a price-to-sales ratio or a price-to-book ratio to give you what you're looking for. Let me show you what I mean. Some very yep. <clears throat> simple maths in here. If, for example, um, I was to say to you, a PE ratio for a particular company is five. Now, if you're not sure about what I'm talking about here, do see my what is a PE ratio video first, okay? Um, and what you're trying to get out of this exercise is the value of a company, the price. Because the PE ratio is the price per share to earnings per share or the entire market capitalization 
to one year's earnings, historic or forecast? And you know the answer is five, okay? You can rearrange this by multiplying both sides by E. So the value of the company, if you like, the price is equal to five times E. Mathematically, you just multiply both sides by E, and it becomes this, price is five times E. Now, here's my point, okay? It's not the maths that I'm worrying about too much. That wasn't too bad, though, hopefully. It's this. Let's say you have an earnings figure for the company you're trying to value, okay? You think uh, a realistic earnings figure is 100 million. All right? And what you've done is you've gone out and looked for firms. Imagine you're trying to value a private company using private, uh, publicly quoted companies, for example, that have share prices and so on determined by the market. You've decided that comparable firms in the market have, let's say, um, call those benchmark firms. Other firms like this one typically have a PE ratio of five. You probably see where I'm going with this. So you've decided similar firms have a PE ratio of five to this firm. Reliable estimate of earnings, 100 million a year. You could, on that basis, say, well, the expected price, the value of this thing, is five times E, which is five times 100 million. So. 500 million, very quick and dirty. Right, so you're saying this company is worth really using a very quick comparative method looking at other companies, about 500 million. Right? Now who would that be useful to? You can clearly see it's a very simplified method. No one would actually go and buy a company on this basis, at least I hope they wouldn't, just using this one method. They do other things like the asset-based approach in, in a previous video or the DCF approach I'll mention in a future one. But to whom would this be useful, okay, if anybody? And the answer is, well, if you're looking at um, a company that's already listed as an investor and trying to get comparisons, is it cheap, is it expensive? You might say, well, similar companies trade on a PE of five. This one's got reliable earnings of 100 million a year. Expected value, 500 million. If it's actually valued at only 300 million, its market capitalization is only 300 million, you might say, oh, actually, hmm, maybe it's a little bit cheaper than it should be. You know, maybe there's scope to investigate further. Is, is the company I'm looking at undervalued? Okay, so there's one little use of it. Um, somebody trying to bring, let's say, a private company to the market for the first time, if they can find comparable companies, and that's easier said than done, of course. Most directors would say, our company's unique, and all the rest of it. They find comparable companies, they would say, well, let's look at those comparable companies, average the PE ratio, multiply our company's earnings by that, and get a ballpark figure for what this new one to the market's worth. So it's a pretty, pretty quick and dirty approach. All right. So there's a couple of sort of uses of this technique. If you're in a negotiation to buy a company, let's say, unlikely situation for a lot of you, I know, but you might use this as a backup, as I mentioned before. You might do some DCF, which is pretty meaty. You might do some net asset-based valuation, and you might use this as a kind of sensibleness check, if you like. You know, does, does this answer come anywhere near the other answers? All right. So there it is. Very, very fast, just an introductory video, the multiples-based approach to valuing a firm, deciding how much it's worth, or whether an existing firm's cheap or expensive. Right, like all these methods, it's more art than science, insofar as you've got to pick the right multiple. All right, it's that decision to make, first of all. You know, am I looking at an earnings-based, a sales-based, an asset-based, or a what-based sort of company? That's fairly key. And then secondly, you've got to be comfortable. You've got your benchmark right. Okay, It's easier said than done to just say, well, I'll go out and find a bunch of similar companies, and I'll use them as a benchmark for this one. How many there are, and how similar they actually are, is a matter of judgment in practice. But there it is, okay, the second of three methods that you could use to go about putting some sort of value on a company.